Good evening, this is Dr. Bones live, and today my guest is Beth from March to May. Welcome to the show. Thank you, glad to be here. So, uh, first off, Beth, I was having a look over your guys' bio, and uh, I said that you guys I met back in 2013, but uh, before that, he done uh, both of you had done some traveling, and uh, that which, which has uh, influenced your music along the way. Uh, now, where do you, where would you find would be the, the place to give you the most influence towards your music? Oh gosh, that's a hard question. Um, I think I've always been pretty musical, so I'm not sure if it's any one place that inspired me personally. Um, I think just more the combination of everywhere I ended up going, because you're always seeing new things and it's always kind of becoming this new kind of stimulus for you. But um, Darren actually would probably have had a, a better answer for that, because he started playing guitar while he was in Chile in South America. And I know that that was a hugely formative period for him. So, and, and I lived there as well. So it was, I think Tuna might be, be the best answer to that. <laughs> All right, on. No, it's just, uh, just seeing it is kind of interesting to me because you, you can pick up so many different, uh, well, different types of music across the world, right? Especially different instruments and that sort of thing. So it, uh, yeah, it was, absolutely. It was uh, very interesting to me to see how you guys were kind of, well, you know, traveling on your own and then met up and then all of a sudden all oh, you guys are creating this like uh, g- good uh, folk rock music now um, yeah <laughs> so w- with the name though March to May like how did that come about just because obviously the, I know it follows each other uh, month per month but was it the idea behind it or so March to May actually came from a couple of different sources uh, we liked the sound of it and the alliteration in general we liked that it was springtime and um, had the sense of forward motion and that you could read it as kind of like marching towards May. But it was also our formative period. We wrote our first song in March and moved forward as a band in May and it's our birthday month. So oh, wow. lots, of, uh, lots of reasons behind the name choice. Right, I don't want because, you know, and for us, you know, spring is upon us, that sort of thing and and uh, it, uh, by all means it does uh, sound very positive <laughs> just, just to start out with. Now, Writing your your songwriting process, I mean, it's got to be. I would think it's got to be really interesting. But would you guys, do you guys, kind of start off like writing? Do you guys always write together, or do you write separately and bring stuff into the fray, or how does that work? A little bit of all, to be honest. Um, most of our songs are co-written, and that's a very, um, very in tune process for us. Um, we basically sit down together, and in a certain amount of time, we will sit work together to write a song, both um, instrumentation and lyric, um, and melody and every aspect of it. But there are a couple songs, for sure, that one of us will have a much stronger idea on and kind of go forward and write and then break to the group and, and vice versa. So, kind of a mix, but definitely, definitely lots of involvement by both of us in the creative process. Now, do you guys ever find that uh, <clears throat> you uh, could possibly... Uh, it's, for lack of better words, butt heads, just because like maybe one person feels a little bit stronger about what they've written and saying, no, no, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I really want to carry through with this. Um, I, you know, I don't think we argue very much about music. Occasionally, we'll, we'll just have different views on where a song should be going, but we usually, like, it's, pretty, it's a pretty non-combative process <laughs> when we do them. Yeah. <laughs> we, we comment often with, a, I think, both 
happiness and uh, a little bit of surprise, but we, we tend to work really well together. Right on. It's it just it's it's one thing. It's it's every everybody's process is different, and a lot of times, you know, there are burning heads. But that's that's normal. I mean, I'm not expecting like a like a huge blowout story here or anything like that. I'm just just curious as to you know uh, if sometimes if that actually does happen. And most of the time, just like anything else, there is from what I've been told, it's just minor and petty, and it's kind of an easy kind of overcome with it. And once you kind of talk it a little bit more, it's like it makes more sense. So I mean, you might. Not be uh, uh, on the same page at first, but eventually come to that result. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that there is definitely a process of um, learning how to work with somebody and learning just how to communicate well right. and listen and not fly off the handle when something doesn't go your way. Like I think these are, these are, that's the aspect of forming any serious relationship, whether it's professional, musical, personal. There, there's always that that process of just figuring out how to how to be in tune with somebody. Right, and and now with your musical backgrounds, uh, having two different backgrounds, that I would think above anything has got to be the most interesting thing about about your the deal and the way you guys work. Because I mean, it's it's like I know we just kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but. Uh, your backgrounds are coming from so many different places and so many different influences. I mean, it just got to be like a, a, a constant uh, a creative process, meaning like when you guys are working at it, like you can just sit down and like, and like, you know, three hours have gone by and you're like, wow, I can't believe it's gone by so fast because we've done this, this and this, or, you know, this is sounding so good. Let's pull more of this and add, uh, add something else to it. and a lot of just, even though we grew up very differently and, and Darren has a much more classic instrumentation background and I have a much more classic vocal background and we listen to different music and we kind of have different ways of seeing the world in some, in some senses. Right. There's something about it that just clicks. Like we're just on the same wavelength and that's been something that, that we've put to the test a number of times and, and have not really rewarding, so we're pretty happy with it. Oh, very cool. So we are going to take a quick little break here, and we're going to listen to your song, Embers. This is March to May. Dig this. Say, 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 
fall and slip away And my sorrows turn to hope Memories that defy the space That you have March to May, Embers. Uh, no, but this song, uh, a very emotional song, and uh, but I, I absolutely loved you guys' harmonies. Now, is that something? Is that something you guys have worked out for a while, or just been just part of the, the uh, um, writing process? You know, that's been something that's been there from the very beginning. Gary and I have a story about kind of how we met. Um, neither of us really knew that the other one did music, right? Until we were on. A songwriting retreat, and Darren started playing one of his songs, and I started harmonizing, and it was kind of one of those punchy moments, I guess, for both of us. Um, it just realizing how easy it was right. to sing together, and something that was just pretty clear early on is that we just we just harmonize very well together. <laughs> we, it comes pretty naturally, it comes pretty instinctively, and it is something that we're constantly working on and experimenting with, sort of. Well, you know, it's, it's really, how to be the best version of it, but right. yeah. Well, I like uh, we, one of the reasons I like it so much is because there's like almost like some like delays and pauses in between, and mm -hmm. just harmonizing in general. Like, I mean, like I, I'm not a vocalist, so I'm just speaking from a fan point of view and from what I've been told, sort of thing. But uh, I would think it's got to be a lot more difficult to to put those pauses pauses in as opposed to just kind of following someone what they're singing. I mean, that seems relatively easy, but once you start putting those pauses and delays in it, I mean, that's got to be a bit more of a challenge, and uh, you guys make it sound like, you, like you've been doing it for like years and years and years. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, with this song in, uh, in particular, did, uh, well, I know you guys co-write the songs, but was was there uh, like an actual story behind this, or was there just kind of you guys just started writing and the word just kind of came as you were going? Um, so it's funny, Everett was actually the first song that we wrote together, and we have been kind of playing around with this idea of loss, particularly because of something in my own experience, which um, I recently, well, sort of recently, uh, lost my grandfather, and oh. have been sort of reflecting on just the process of watching the people around you pull themselves out of grief, right. and put their lives back together and keep going. And so that was something that was very fresh on my mind and, and kind of inspired 